Our Today staff are people of a variety of backgrounds and rap sheets, perhaps, I don't know, but we've learned that our science correspondent, Bob Bazell, in an earlier age, was a young merchant seaman. So it was appropriate we brought him aboard to ask him if he might explain some of the technology that keeps this 70,000-ton vessel afloat. Jane, good morning. One of the things that's amazing about a ship this size is that the functions needed to keep it going are performed by people who essentially work in different worlds. We're going to show you three of those worlds, the bridge, the engine room, and the galley. And we'll start with the bridge. Evening at sea. On the bridge, First Officer Stig Nilsson stands watch alone, in control of the world's largest passenger ship, almost one-fifth longer than the Titanic. Nilsson could call for help if he needed it, but with the technology on this bridge, that would seldom be necessary. The seas are slightly rough this evening, so Nilsson has deployed stabilizers, huge fins below deck, which move automatically to lessen the ship's rocking motion. This, he admits, does not satisfy all the passengers. Some people get seasick as soon as they are over the gangway in Miami, so it's... <laughs> but um, they are out and they are working. Navigation no longer means looking at the stars. About every hour and a half, a signal indicates one of six navigation satellites has passed overhead. The officer need only press a few buttons on the computer to learn his position, accurate to within 100 yards, or one-third the length of the ship. Nor is there any guessing about the weather. Satellite photos and forecasting maps arrive by a different satellite. Most of the time at sea, the ship is steered by an automatic pilot, and the duty officer simply turns a dial to change course. But the steering can be switched to manual, and Nilsson was willing to give a novice a chance. Uh, now, right, right now, I'm, I'm steering the world's largest passenger ship. Right? steering the world's largest passenger ship. Yeah. Why is it moving so much now? Yeah, that's just well, the currency. You're a bad helmsman. Uh, I see. Well, it takes a little practice. Uh -huh. <laughs> One of the newest and most comforting pieces of technology is the anti-collision radar. This resembles the systems used by air traffic controllers. The closest ship is circled on the radar screen. A computer displays the time and distance the two ships will pass and sounds an alarm if it is too close. At one point, the radar shows another ship is on a dead collision course with the Norway. Since the other ship is to the starboard or right, Nilsson follows the rules of the road and changes the Norway's course. 150 degrees until he is clear. A while later, the other ship, a tanker, passes at a safe distance. Ego Fossen, the chief engineer, presides over another of the ship's worlds. The control room for the engines resembles the control room for a huge electrical generating plant. Dials and computers measure all sorts of functions. But you have to descend the stairs into the world of intense heat and noise to feel the power of the ship. The boilers burn nine tons of fuel an hour to generate 900 pounds per square inch of pressure to turn the turbines with 40,000 horsepower. This rotates the two two-foot diameter shafts to the propellers more than 100 times a minute to push the Norway through the water. The galley is another world still. The first impression is volume. As the cooks prepare for the evening meal for more than 2,000 people, there is lots of everything. Here, too, technology helps. This device scrambles and removes the shells from hundreds of eggs at a time. Felix Bauman, the executive chef, knows the importance of his role. They come here to relax and to eat. Sure. First question is, uh, how is the food on the ship? As the passengers assemble leisurely and order their meals, the pace in the kitchen becomes furious, as waiters fill their orders for each of the choices in the multi-course meal. Meanwhile, on the bridge, the officer continues his quiet watch. Well, what about it, former merchant seaman? You were... You, were you on the bridge? No, I, well, you can see how well I did when I was steering, so I wasn't on the bridge. In fact, I was a cook's assistant. I spent most of my time at sea chopping vegetables, <laughs> and that's why I got to be a science correspondent. <laughs> you betcha. We'll be back after the station break. <laughs> As we head towards the close of a first hour, the old saying goes, and the going gets tough, the tough head for their umbrella. Well, you're denying that it's raining. This is a scattered shower. It's raining on me. It's not raining on Brian. <laughs> Let not, me know if you want to share this. Well, I mean, we look at these wonderful people out well, here. wonderful and people. They, they're sitting out here. It's, it's, see there? Is it raining? <laughs> but, 
<laughs> oh, they're waiting. See, they're also the people who have the t-shirts. See have you we, later. Have we managed to show any of these t-shirts as, as the day goes along? It, it is bizarre to walk around this um, this ship and see the great number of t-shirts that bear your likeness and, and mine and Willard's and, and everybody else's on board. That's the back. It says Today Cruise, and it's got the dates on it, and the front of it has has our likeness on board the ship. We'll show you one as it goes along. Well, let's talk to you a little bit about some of the things that are that are available to do on board here. There are, what, 1,800 people yes. on board? And, and some of them are... Makers. Some of them are, we might say, of the of the athletic persuasion, and for them, there there are some things to do. Skeet shooting up top. You tried that yet? No, I haven't. But I heard Laura Pressman did pretty well. Laura Pressman, right there, oh, yeah. um, our producer's wife. That's yeah, Laura. Pretty well. She hit one. That's why they screamed. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can hit golf balls off the back end. There is a, a teaching pro on board, um, and you can putt. The guy who shags the balls off the back end has a tough job. Beyond that, um, then there is uh, basketball. Those whose legs are those? Well, they aren't mine. Um, <laughs> yes, they were. <laughs> the, the wide body belongs to me down down under, and the smartest thing is to give it to the tallest guy on the court. And yes, we are four for four in games up top. Um, if you happen to uh, to apply to a younger beat, there is aerobics available. You've partaken. Who are you talking to? You. <laughs> I walked through. I felt this vibration in my room. I thought maybe you were participating. <laughs> there, there, there are there are aerobics available inside, and yes, indeed, there are even tango lessons. Does this take you back to Buenos Aires at all? And our time spent there. And one final note. Yes, there is a casino on board for those occasions when it might be added. We are at least uh, three miles outside of oh, Portugal. That, that's just Monopoly money you're throwing away, isn't it? Yeah, it's only Monopoly, Monopoly. money. You're only allowed to play. You're not allowed to play with any real money. It's just these just these chips. Just pretend money. That's right. Just pretend money. And then at the end of the whole thing, not you the get, kids' college education, Brian. That's right. You get you get to give it back. Actually, things have not been bad down there. They closed the casino yesterday at four o'clock. Because we, they saw you coming. We weren't hurt real real bad at all. <laughs> Look, pressing ahead um, on a Tuesday you make morning. Make a bet on whether it's going to rain in the next. Well, hour? it's stopped now. It has stopped now. We're going to talk about fishing rights and exactly who owns the fish as we press ahead. We're going to take a, uh, a look at some, some local crafts and, and the artists who, who make them. We've got some other goodies in store, too, as we make our way through Charleston on this um, second day of our week-long tour. See, it's not bad. Put it away. The sun's coming out. And we're going to come back in a moment, right after station. Anchors away aboard the USS Lexington with Elizabeth Taylor, Don Johnson, and Felicia Rashad in a two-hour special on Bob Oak's high-flying birthday, Monday.